Welcome, Studio Scrappers. Today is the first in a series of ways you can use Photoshop to enhance your Studio J layouts. We're going to talk about titles today. And here is an example of a layout that I did about my cat, Kit. And unfortunately, she passed away last September, so that was very traumatic for me. So I used scrapbooking as a way to um, ease some of that pain and, and go through the grieving process. So I want to point out a couple things. So first of all, I did use my quick title tool to write her name, Kit, and then to um, place it so that I had a vertical title instead of a horizontal title. But the the actual title of this page is Final Great Adventure. And the quick title tool using the stickies didn't really work because there were too many letters and honestly it wasn't the look that I was going for. I wanted more of a script font. And so I downloaded a font from the internet and in Photoshop I created the title that I wanted. Well you'll notice here that this, oh, I need to click right on it, okay. This right here actually was not a photo well. It's currently a photo well, but originally it was a text well. And so I simply converted my text well into a photo well by clicking the little icon that looks like a person. And then that allows me to place my image there. I had uploaded the image that I created with the title as a photo. And so I can simply drag it into my newly created photo well and there I have my title. So let's take a look at what that file looks like in Photoshop. I'm using Photoshop Elements today simply because I have a feeling that's probably what most people use. I actually use the full version of Photoshop, but um, I have both, so we'll use Elements for these tutorials, unless you tell me otherwise. If you um, respond, you know, leave a comment on this video and let me know which version of Photoshop you use, that would be really helpful too. But anyway, this is what the actual file looks like. You'll notice this checkered background, and the checkered background represents that it is transparent. So the only image that's going to show up is the title and the little bit of a shadow that I put right behind the title. And I save this file as a PNG file so that it maintains its transparency. Okay, now let's go ahead and take a look back here at Studio J and I'm going to bring up another layout where I did this exact same thing. And this is my Harry Potter layout when I went to the Wizarding World of Harry Potter just a couple months ago. It was amazing! Um, if you're a Harry Potter fan at all, I highly recommend it. I had so much fun. Tons, tons of fun. Uh, definitely would love to go back there. Okay, so anyway, enough of my Harry Potter because I really could go on and on and on. In this layout, again, I did the same thing. I had what was a text well for the title, and I simply converted it to a photo well. And I had created an image in Photoshop of my title, so I simply dragged that in there. And there is my title. So one of the things that you'll note about this is that when you're in Photoshop, you kind of have to guess at what size that actual photo well is. 
Now, if you're lucky and the image or the pattern is in one of our how-to books, such as Reflections, Imagine, Cherish, or um, Magic, then you can simply look at the dimensions that are given in that pattern in the how-to book and you'll know exactly what size you need to make your image so that it fits perfectly. On this one, I didn't have the pattern in a how-to book, so I kind of had to guesstimate. And I could see that when I, let me, oops, let me click on this. So when you look at this image, you can see that it really about cuts the paper in half. So I knew that this was six inches. I could kind of guess that this photo was probably a five by seven photo. So if that was the case, then this was roughly two inches. And so those were the dimensions that I worked with when I was in Photoshop. So let's go ahead and go to um, Photoshop and I'll show you my image size and here I set my resolution to 300 pixels per inch because that's pretty standard for printing images um, the 300 pixels are DPI dots per inch and so I set my document size as 6 inches width by 2 inches height. And that gave me then the pixels 1800 by 600. So then I simply hit OK and I have my transparent background. And you can see that the bottom layer, let me turn that off, so the bottom layer is indeed completely transparent. And then I created another layer and this is where I'm going to type my title. Well first of all you probably have to find the actual font that you want to use. So in this case I went to the internet and I went to a website called um, dafont.com and they have a lot of free fonts that you can choose from and you simply can scroll through them or if you know the the name of the font that you want you can simply do a search using the name and so I um, kind of just scroll through these periodically because fonts are fun and I like to download lots of fonts and so here I found this Harry Potter font and knew that that would be perfect so I simply downloaded the font to my computer unzipped it and then installed it and so then I was ready to use it in Photoshop I simply go over to my fonts and select the font name and I'm ready to go. So I will start by typing the actual font and you can see my font size is quite large because um, of my DPI. That's really why it's so large. So let me just go ahead and type in Harry and then clearly this is off the screen so I need to move it.